Hi everyone and welcome to today's Germination Retail Roundtable webinar series. My name is Mark Sankowitz and I am editor with Germination and I'm happy to be your host. Today's theme is how 2020 Seed Labs Greenhouse creates new possibilities in seed testing. We're going to hear about the greenhouse, why 2020 Seed Labs built it, and how it offers clients enhanced opportunities for testing and research. Now, before we begin, I would like to thank our sponsor, 2020 Seed Labs, for their support. Now, if you have a question at any time during the webinar, please type it into the chat box and we will answer your question when we get to the end of today's webinar. And uh, just so you know, a uh, recording of this webinar will be available on germination.ca within 48 hours. We are recording the webinar today, so you'll be able to go to our website after the webinar and watch it on demand. And we have three great speakers today who are going to talk all about the greenhouse. We'll hear from Sarah Foster. She is president of 2020 Seed Labs. She started 2020 Seed Labs in 1989 in Nisku, Alberta. Sarah works extensively with government, farmers, and industry within agriculture and is one of the most experienced seed analysts in North America, having completed her accreditation for the United Kingdom United States and Canada. Rachel Malenka is client success manager for 2020 Seed Labs. Rachel grew up on her family farm near Warwick, Alberta, and currently her parents are full-time grain farmers. Rachel graduated from the University of Alberta with a Bachelor of Science in Environmental Sciences and can now apply her degree to helping people make better agronomic decisions. And last but not least, Danika Bonowitz has been working as a senior seed analyst at 2020 Seed Labs for four years now. She enjoys her position as a seed analyst and lead on greenhouse projects because her days are never the same and there's always something to learn. Now, just a little bit of background. Last year, 2020 Seed Labs built a full-scale greenhouse to offer clients enhanced opportunities for testing and research. In this webinar, you'll get a full tour of the new greenhouse, learn how a greenhouse offers a new array of options in seed testing solutions for clients as well. And also, just your, just so you're aware, uh, 2020 Seed Labs is offering all registrants of today's webinar a free research or agronomy consultation. Just click the Get More Info button for more information. Now we're going to start off by playing a short video that shows you the building of the 2020 Seed Labs greenhouse. It's about a minute long and it's a time-lapse video that goes from the beginning to the end of the construction. And uh, it's really cool. So we're gonna play that for you now before Rachel gives us a tour of the actual completed greenhouse.
Now that video obviously doesn't do justice to the weeks and months it took to actually build this greenhouse. So Rachel Malenka is here today to offer us a tour. Are you there, Rachel? Hi everyone. There you are. Hello, Rachel. The floor is yours. I'll let you give us your little tour. For sure. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, Danica, Sarah, and I are on site at our NISQ Alberta lab. And I'm just outside the greenhouse here uh, where we're going to give you a little tour. Um, I'd be really interested to know where everyone's from today. So feel free to put your name, where you're from, and if there's still snow on the ground, where you are from. So my name is Rachel. Thank you so much, Mark, for introducing me. And I work with our customers, farmers, seed growers, um, and clients uh, as a client success manager. So really building that bridge between the lab and the field, uh, going both ways with what's happening in the field and bringing that information back to the lab, and then vice versa with uh, an example of like this webinar and what we're gonna do today and uh, also working with industry that way and providing that information for industry and uh, talking to everyone done and some trials and testing that uh, Danika Bonowicz uh, completes in her position as a senior seed analyst. And uh, Mark, like Mark said, for all registrants, uh, either live or if you watch this as a recording, we are offering all of you either an agronomy consultation or if you have that uh, research idea or something sparks in your mind after this webinar, uh, we'll be able to uh, provide you with a 30 minute uh, research consultation as well and see if your project can fit uh, into our greenhouse or our testing capabilities. So I think Mark uh, has put that link in the comments. Uh, so you can just fill out that form and we'll get in touch with you after uh, the webinar. Yeah, actually, we uh, we have it up on the screen right now. So yeah, all you have to do is click the button to get more info. Perfect. Thanks, Mark. So we are 2020 Seed Labs, and we have this lab here, which is in NISQ, Alberta. Uh, we also have a lab in Winnipeg, Manitoba, and we have a lab in Chile. So in our Chile lab, we actually have a team of seed analysts and crop inspectors down there right now for the contra season harvest. And that lab helps provide um, a seamless entry into Canada by providing purity testing, crop inspection services down there. Uh, so then those hybrid canola varieties can then be planted in time uh, in Canada here. So we support um, our uh, industry companies that way for Canadian agriculture uh, and international agriculture. So a fun fact about 2020 Seed Labs, we are Canada's first private commercial seed testing lab and 2020 comes from the name or our name comes from uh, never letting um, hindsight be 2020. So we're always here to support you making sure that all the information is on the table so you can make those uh, data-based production and crop management decisions. We also, our seed analysts can uh, grade for certified seed all 20 of the grade tables. So that's also where our name comes from. We are uh, certified under a quality management system. Uh, so that's 901. And that's just uh, how we standardize our protocols and work processes and making sure that uh, our standards are up to par with industry and with our lab. We are accredited by the Canadian Food Inspection Agency accredited, and you can be confident in those results. So our greenhouse here, I'm standing in front of it. It was completed last summer in 2021, and we are so excited. It's right in our backyard here in NISQ, and uh, we're very excited just to be able to have this on our site here in central Alberta and provide all of our Canadian and international customers with these uh, new testing capabilities that we're gonna talk about. One thing I wanna point out here, if you can see in the screen here, it's our weather station. And Sarah has a few interesting points about that. Great view with this camera. <laughs> uh, so Mark has a poll question for you guys. Uh, so Mark, if you can put that up for us. And there we go. Yeah. 
Yeah, we're just asking if you've ever heard of 2020 Seed Labs or used their seed testing services before. So please feel free to fill out the poll. We'll leave it up on the screen for about 30 seconds or so. So Rachel, feel free to continue while people answer the poll. Yeah, perfect. Thanks, guys. Yeah, we're just interested to see where you're from, if you've used us before, and how we can support you in those ways. So now we're going to head into the greenhouse. Um, and if you have any questions about on-site, please put it in the chat, and we're going to go talk to Sarah now. So uh, stay tuned, and we'll be right back. Sounds good. So yeah, we are just headed into the greenhouse right now. Ah, there we go. And we have a very nice view. All right, we'll give everyone a couple more seconds to answer the poll. Hi, Rachel. Hi, Sarah. Hello. How are, how are you today? I'm really well. How are you? Not bad, not bad. I, uh, I think we're up to positive 10. Well, let me just look at my phone quick. What are, whoa, we're minus two here in Manitoba, so we might actually get some snow melting today. Well, we're, we're zero and partly cloudy. And in 25 degrees, somewhere between 25 and 28. So we could break a sweat here pretty quick. <laughs> <laughs> Don't feel sorry for us. <laughs> Okay, great. Thanks, guys, for hanging on there. So we are in the greenhouse right now. And I'm with Sarah Foster. So do you want to just give us a quick intro of yourself and your position here at 2020? And um, we're celebrating 33 years in business as a company. So uh, yeah, just give us a few uh, points there and just hold the mic for yourself. Then. So hello, everybody. Good morning and good afternoon, wherever you are. Um, it's a real pleasure to be here today. Um, on this exclusive greenhouse webinar. We've been so excited to showcase this for you because um, it's a completely new venture for us. Um, so my position here with 2020, um, uh, first and foremost, I'm a senior seed analyst and uh, I started the company, I think I already heard the introduction, but back in 1989, and Rachel's absolutely right, we're 33 years old in August of this year. And um, I am the president and um, I'm primarily responsible for all sorts of things. Um, really missed not going down to Chile this year for the contra season, um, but I've stayed back working on um, equally as many other important things. Great to see you, Sarah. Now, to, to kick things off here, I, I'm curious, uh, and I know our audience is curious, what the initial thought was in building this greenhouse. What what led to this? What Do you remember? I, it may, maybe it's difficult to remember the exact moment, but, but when did you have that first thought that, hmm, maybe we should build a greenhouse at 2020 Seed Labs? Do you remember when and, and why that thought first occurred to you? Uh, well, initially, we started thinking about it about five years ago, and it was an idea that came out of um, the work Oh, are you still there, Sarah? You look like you um, may have frozen up. The inconvenience. Oh, ah, there we go. Come back. You're still there. Sorry, that, Sorry Sarah. It looks like I may have had a little freeze up. Can, can you just repeat that part? My apologies. Sure. Yeah. So we initially had the thought about building a greenhouse five years ago. And primarily because we were um, renting space from the University of Alberta and have been since we started. And it was just becoming inconvenient to, to work there. We were always having to book space. And... I mean, really, through we knew that it was just going to get more and more difficult. So we were we were just competing for space all the time, and the opportunities for greenhouse research and greenhouse studies were starting to increase quite a bit. So we started think, well, we've got the space. Um, obviously, we had to give up uh, quite a bit of our uh, car park, but. Um, you know, we decided we needed about a thousand square feet. And we had some challenges um, with, with the build. Um, 
once we got past permitting um, for the Niskula Duke County, um, not, a, not a terrible challenge, but just as you can imagine, you know, there's certain criteria that has to be met with, with a structure like this. And then, of course, the pandemic, and there is a global shortage of um, different products. And um, we experienced some difficulties receiving stuff from the Netherlands, particularly with our climate and data control. But here we are. Um, I have to thank Kerry Matheson. She was the project lead on this. And uh, Richard Bruins, who uh, set up all the controls uh, to make sure that the greenhouse operates properly. And then, of course, Jerry McKinga out of Lacombe, who built it. And to be honest with you, it went up so fast. When, once we got everything here, it went up within a week. It was just absolutely phenomenal how fast this thing was built in the end. Yeah, I played that little video for everyone at the beginning. Uh, so I, I can imagine yeah. how much work it must have been in, in building this. And you, you mentioned some challenges in building the greenhouse and, and any project like that comes with a few snags. But was was there a major one or two major successes that really stood out for you that, that you thought, wow, that went better than I thought it did? Well, I think watching these panels, you know, behind us um, just slot into place was quite remarkable. It was like building a Lego house, I thought. Um, but no, I mean, obviously the success is, is that, you know, we're here. Um, we've just gone through probably one of Canada's worst, coldest winters where we had days and weeks on end at minus 40. And I was really quite concerned how, how this would stand up. And it has. We've had no major issues. And happy to say that it's um, not, not cost us as much as I was expecting it to cost. So those are the successes. And of course, the, uh, the other success is just how much interest this has um, created and how much work we're getting and uh, just the, the, you know, the variation of work and that kind of thing, which is, you know, quite incredible. It's uh, surpassed our expectations and we're really, really excited to work with different um, people in the ag industry and horticultural industry. Great. Well, excellent. Yeah. And I know, uh, Cost savings are always a wonderful bonus. So yeah, mm -hmm. I'm sure that was definitely uh, a good experience for you. And, and so Rachel, you're going to talk a little bit about some of the new testing capabilities that you're capable of doing because of this greenhouse. Yeah. Um, first, I just wanted to ask you, Sarah, did you have any comments on like the scope of mechanics with the greenhouse or anything you wanted to touch on how it's... Um actually working for us currently with projects. Uh, I know we mentioned the weather station. So um, yeah, let's talk a little bit about that. And then if people have questions about uh, physically what's going on with mechanics, we'll be happy to answer that after. So put your questions in the chat. Great. Thank you, Rachel. Yeah. Um, well, other than it being a great place to hang out on a really cold day, um, there's lots going on here and there are some confidential and sensitive projects that we can't show you um but just to let you know um we're probably about half full so we're taking up about 500 square feet and in the background you'll see some fun stuff um we've got to jump on growing some tomatoes and jump on growing some vegetables just just to see, just to see how it works. And of course, if we're burning energy, we may as well use it and um, you know, make, make use of what we've got. So we built this greenhouse to offer flexibility for more improved diagnostics. And it's allowed us to um, take our lab tests so much further. So you know, this is for enhanced testing, and um, you know that's that's one of the things that we can do. Um, obviously, we're focusing very much on research and studies. So you know we're open for business in that respect, and we're asking people to book ahead because we are filling up. We're going to have two very big projects coming here, starting in the next week or so, I believe. And as I say, it's taken our seed testing world so much further. Um, some of the things that I'm wanting us to get into, and Danica is going to talk on previous projects that we've done, um, 
But we can do plant nutrient testing, plant toxicity testing, disease testing, herbicide tolerance testing. I think we can support breeders in um, high value vegetable crops, things like peppers, cucumbers, strawberries, um, what else? Uh, hemp, cannabis, not that they're vegetables, but I know some people eat them. <laughs> uh, but just help other, you know, greenhouse um, producers. And something that's uh, been very interesting for me is if there's any people in forestry listening, um, we would like to support silviculture and the forestry industry as well. And of course, flowers. And there will be times when this isn't full. So if any research organization in Alberta or anywhere else um, wanted to use this space fully and take it over, they're more than welcome to, to rent it. Um, in terms of the enhanced work that we can offer um, from the lab, like taking the lab that bit further, would be things like if there was ever a germination test that was in question for, say, chemical toxicity, where um, there had been a a chemical applied at the wrong time or the wrong chemical applied, um, you know, we could take that germination further and, and look to see, you know, actually how it affects the, the plants and how it's growing and roots particularly. Um, other than that, um, as I say, the opportunities to, to work with breeders, other research organizations, other greenhouses. I understand that there's a I believe um, a huge strawberry greenhouse just going up. Um, I can't remember all the statistics now, but I think it was something like 4,000 square feet. Um, and it's, uh, you know, something new. And if there's any way that we can support that. So we want to be local as much as we want to be global as well. And so we have just got involved um, with the University of Wageningen with a conglomerate of uh, different um, industry people um, in high profile um, instrumentation um, for looking at uh, airborne pathogens. And as, as you know, we've got the Spornado, um, but you know, the, there is an opportunity to monitor the health of the air in a greenhouse. So that's something that we're seriously looking at and we will be um, a major player with uh, the university in Wageningen. Um, as far as uh, how this operates, it's a fully automated system. Um, I think Rachel will have shown you the weather station outside. So there's an exact location. Um, we, we, it knows where we are and it was based on the longitude and the latitude. So we've got an exact um, monitoring system for what's going on environmentally. Um, so it's monitoring things like wind speed, relative humidity, temperature outside. Um, I believe, I just have to refer to my notes, but I believe that it knows when it's raining. Um, and I think to some extent, I'm not 100%, but it does measure the, the sunlight. So inside, we're currently operating around about 25 degrees, and that will be for an eight hour period, and then we will drop down to around 15. So it's kind of emulating what goes on in, in our controlled environments in, with the germinator. So it's just basically copying um, the germinator. Um, the neat thing about this is that uh, it, there's all the sensors when working together um, will, for example, um, when it comes to the, the lights, they will go on and off um, depending on how much sunlight has been accumulated. So if the plants have accumulated enough sunlight, um, the lights go off. Um, the temperature, of course, is um, controlled. And as I say, right now we're operating at 25. And that transition goes within half an hour. So um, the germinators take an hour. Um, 
this, believe it or not, for the size of it, this thousand square foot, is quite remarkable that it can do a temperature change so quickly. Um, the, um, in addition to that, we're monitoring um, humidity. So the more plants that are in here, the more humid it gets. Um, and then, of course, we have to rely on air circulation to clear it out, and it's purged out of the building. Um, ventilation, we've got ventilation that run north and south on both sides of the building. So depending on if we need to release heat and the di di direction of the wind um, will depend on which vent opens. Um, there's a curtain which is typically closed um, at night, but it's closed at the moment because we're still trying to conserve energy. Um, so at night, it keeps the heat in, and, and that moves um, as and when needed. Um, other than that, um, I think I've pretty much covered uh, what's happening in here. And then the other thing, too, is it knows when the, sun, you know, the sunrise and the sunset. Um, it's, there's a lot of data that's being collected. And not only are we monitoring it on site, but we are monitoring it on our um, cell phones as well. So if we have any issues, we're alerted. Oh, wow. So you mean like you, you could be like at home or relaxing, having a cup of tea or whatever, and then something goes wrong at the greenhouse and like it beeps on your phone. You're like, wow, like we better check this out. Like, like it actually works like that? It does. Yeah. Wow. Huh. I believe Richard um, has it on his cell phone. Um, and I'm sure there are a number of other people, um, but he's our resident expert in terms of looking after the climate. Um, oh. So I believe that he does. The other thing, too, I wanted to mention, we don't have this, but at some point um, we can customize this greenhouse with um, a watering system and a pesticide application system if necessary. Oh, wow. Talk about being able to do a lot of things. How, how does this set you guys apart? <laughs> Thank you. Go ahead. <laughs> we need the cup of tea. Yeah, <laughs> the cup of tea. You mentioned well, tea. Yeah. Speaking is difficult after a while. So yeah, by all means, take a sip of water. Yeah. Um, how does it set us apart? Well, I'm sure other seed testing laboratories have access to greenhouses. Um, I'm not sure that there are any that actually have any on site. I'm sure the, the bigger companies do. Um, what I love about this is that it's just several feet from the lab and um, we're independent and we, you know, as Rachel said, we can bring in industry experts if necessary um, to assist with uh, research projects if it's beyond our scope. Um, but it just, you know, it's something that, as I say, we wanted to do five years ago because we were using other facilities. And um, it's just made it so much more cost efficient for everybody. And, um, you know, it's just been a, a tremendous addition um, you know, to what we're trying to do here in terms of being that center of excellence for research in agriculture as well as studies. Yeah, and I think you mentioned too, Sarah, like uh, just being this close to the lab, uh, we have all of our departments, molecular diagnostics, uh, disease diagnostics, and our industry experts and staff that come with that and have that training and backing. So uh, we'll talk a bit to Danica about what exactly um, her lead at, or her role as a greenhouse lead um, what all she does, but really we can uh, have our disease diagnostic diagnostician come in and take a look at different symptoms, the product e efficacy. And uh, as well, we are also, because we're independent, we do allow um, if you had wanted to come and check in on your research project or take those photos that you need, um, we could do that for you. Or there's also that opportunity um, to be really involved with those research projects uh, since we're since it is right in our backyard. Yeah. So um, that's great. Uh, I don't think we have any more questions, but if you had any final thoughts, um, you can give her. Um, well, I just want to say thank you, Mark. This is a, a wonderful opportunity. 
Um, expect to see the best vegetables and the best flowers around our lab this year. Um, we have a Zen garden. Um, I don't know that you've ever been introduced to that, but um, we, we really do like to, well, we're always killing things in the lab. We make them live and we grow them, but we throw them out and it's unfortunate. So this time we've got an opportunity to grow something and actually show it and allow it to live. Yeah. So looking forward to getting, getting, getting some good weather and gardening. So thank you very much for the opportunity today. Thank you so much, Sarah. Um, Sarah will be back to answer some questions uh, after the end of Danika's interview. So uh, please, if you have a question uh, along the way, uh, pop it in the Q&A. Um, and thank you, Mark. So uh, we have a second poll question for you guys. And Mark, can you please go ahead and introduce that poll question and put it up I for everyone? We'll send that out right now. And we're just interested if you use greenhouse space for testing or research and development. So feel free to answer the poll question and Rachel will continue on and hear from Danica. Perfect, thanks guys. So Danica is gonna join me. Hi Danica. Hi Danica. <laughs> um, so Danica, could you please introduce yourself again just for everyone who is on here and then uh, just a little bit about your position as both a senior seed analyst and a lead for some of the greenhouse yeah, projects. Of course. Hi, I'm Danica. So I'm a senior seed analyst here at 2020 Seed Labs. Um, I've been here for four years. So if you don't know what a senior seed analyst does, there are two main parts to it. So first is germination. So that's just where we look at uh, seeds. We grow them to seedling stage and we evaluate them to see if they can turn into a mature plant. So we look at the roots, we look at the shoots, cotyledons, all that. Um, we also do a couple other tests like vigor and herbicide tolerance. And then the other part of my job is doing purity testing. So that is where we look through a bulk sample, find uh, like weeds and other crops, and we take those out and then we can grade it or whatnot. Um, that's done for importing and exporting. Um, and then the, on top of that, the other part of my job is uh, greenhouse lead. So I've been doing multiple tro projects in here. I was one of the ones that went all the way over to the university for the past yes. uh, three years along with Joel. And uh, then we brought it here. So I've been doing that testing as well as a couple of our projects. And I also make sure that all the plants in here and all of our vegetables are watered. Perfect. Yeah, so it sounds like uh, you have a very wide variety. Like you said, you love like part of your job, what you love is the variety both yeah. in the lab, in the greenhouse, and then um, yeah, just learning, learning everything new. It was a sure. huge learning curve for staff with this greenhouse, but everyone's done excellent. Um, so, can you just explain, uh, we've had a few uh, previous projects up till now so from when our greenhouse came up. Um, can you just explain those greenhouse projects that you've been that uh, greenhouse team lead for? Yeah, for sure. So one of the smaller projects that we did in here to start with was just, we were given some uh, crop seed and we grew it from seed all the way to maturity and they just want to look at some seed quality issues. So we managed, we, uh, harvested the plant which I thought was pretty cool because we never get to do that in the lab um, and then there were a couple of other projects that had to do with bionutrient uh, seed treatments so they just want to collect data and see how it performed on various crop types and we looked at uh, root biomass and uh, emergence counts which as I think I kind of mentioned was I uh, we we're no maybe I didn't yeah. Sorry, guys. Uh, where because we're in the greenhouse, I managed to actually I did the crops at their seeding depth rate, so what we would normally see in the field. So I thought that was pretty cool that we were able to do that rather than just um, on blotter paper, where everything kind of merges nice and evenly most of the time. Um, and then in terms of just regular testing that we do in here, we do our uh, herbicide tolerance, but it's more of a grow out, so it goes longer than it does in the lab. And of course, just growing vegetables back here. Yeah. Thanks, Danica. Yeah, Danica, I'm, I'm curious in regards to, you know, all the new testing capabilities you have in this, in this greenhouse. From your perspective, how do these new testing capabilities help the industry, agronomists, sea growers, commercial farmers? Uh, let's, let's start with agronomists. How, how does this help, help them out? 
Um, so speaking from an agronomist perspective, as I did work as an agronomist uh, five years ago, um, it gives us the opportunity to test things, uh, test products, test seeds. I know that uh, farmers like to do, it's always, if they want to try a new product, if they want to try a new fungicide or anything, to do just a strip, you know, just one strip of it, see how it performs against the stuff that they know. Um, whereas in here, you can do it on a smaller scale rather than a full strip. You can also, I mean, when you're doing it um, on your farm and all that, you only have, you know, the spring and the summer. Whereas here in the greenhouse, we have all year round. Yeah. If you're like, hey, I want to test this in the winter, you can. If you're like, oh, I should have tested this, or you heard certain things from like other farmers or friends or whatever, you can test it here and we can test it in the winter. So there's that capability. And what about seed growers? Uh, how would something like this uh, benefit them potentially? So we could test different varieties in here. We could test different, you know, data, like I mentioned, with the root biomass and the emergence. We could do that. We can do tissue testing that we can send off and all that kind of stuff. And last but not least, commercial farmers. Why would this be of benefit for them? Like I kind of touched on with the agronomist portion with just, you know, with them doing strip strips for spraying and all that they can come in here test different products and kind of do it that way or things they're not too certain about just on a smaller scale so they're not spending like a huge chunk of money and just can do it whenever they want instead of being confined to you know five months of the year yeah yeah and obviously i mean this would have huge benefits for for uh clients customers but i, I imagine your your staff as well uh, this is probably makes uh, things really exciting for you guys to to get to work in the greenhouse, and I imagine it it helps you learn and and probably I would think get even better at your jobs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, for sure, that's actually a really good point. Um, I wanted to just show everyone something that we've done. Uh, like you mentioned, there all of this greenhouse work and these different projects is new opportunities for staff, and uh, we can work with. Uh, outside industry experts and uh, bring our expertise to the table. So something that we've done is uh, with these live plant samples to look at uh, disease symptoms. So what we have here is some aphanomyces symptoms. So we're looking at those uh, caramel colored roots compared to um, a nice healthy pea plant with lovely roots. So something like this really helps us to, uh, you know, just uh, do some internal training and uh, also pictures as well to be able to train everyone, um, not just the people that can come and physically see, but that's definitely a benefit to physically see, pull up that plant, um, see that firsthand. Uh, I know one of our, uh, our crop inspection manager, Joel, he and I were thinking about maybe planting some weed varieties in the greenhouse to make sure that we can uh, better identify them uh, instead of from press plants or uh, books. So something like that is really bringing new opportunities and it could also be an option for other companies to train staff um, and have those physical plant samples. So just a thought there. And uh, thanks so much for joining us, Danica. I just have one more question for you. Um, just for those interested in becoming a senior seed analyst or if they've seen your position and heard what you do and are really interested, how does one become a, a seed analyst um, at 2020 Seed Labs or another seed laboratory? And um, yeah, just your thoughts on, on generally being a greenhouse project yeah, lead. Of course. Um, so I'll just give a background of how I got to this position. So I grew up on a farm outside of Fort Saskatchewan. So my whole life has been agriculture. Um, and then I went to the University of Alberta. I got my Bachelor of Science in Agriculture. I worked as an agronomist at a, um, a grain elevator crop input, input center. And then I came here to 2020 because I found it fascinating, just the germination and all the seeds and the weeds. And it just seemed very like my thing. Um, it took two years for me to get completely certified. It was a long two years, um, but the training here is extensive. It's great. Uh, it took a year, you take a year to get your germination and then a year to do your purity. Um, you just, you do a lot of samples. They're always checking on you. You can ask questions. You know, we have a herbarium full of all these different weeds and crop seeds. So it's really great and it's really great to work here. I not only 
you know, I'm a senior analyst. I'm working in the greenhouse. I also know how to do, I'm trained as a molecular technician. And I also am going to be doing crop inspection this year. So a wide variety of things that you can do here, you know, never stop learning. You can just keep learning everything. (laughs) That's perfect. Yeah. I just wanted to touch on that for someone who might be interested. Um, Okay. Well, thank you so much for our time. And we'll invite Sarah back for a question and answer period. Um, And then just a reminder that for everyone, thank you so much for attending. And for those of you who attended our webinar live right now, and also for those watching the recording, we are giving away a 30 minute free consultation for either um, an agronomy focused consultation uh, or a research. So if you have that research project that maybe sparked in your mind from uh, our interviews today, uh, feel free to, Mark's gonna put it in the chat and uh, maybe give you a little bit more explanation on how exactly, and it's just, uh, put in your info, email, and we'll get in touch with you uh, to schedule something like that. And you'll be able to talk to us about your research project. And uh, yeah, perfect. Go ahead, Mark. Yeah, we've got that up on the screen right now. So just click the get more info button to get more info. So yeah, we'll do a, a short Q&A now. We've got a few minutes here. If you have a question, please just type it into the chat box. I do have a question regarding... Um, Research proposals. If someone's interested in a research project in a greenhouse, what is the process of developing a research proposal and getting their project into the 2020 greenhouse? Great. I'm going to pass that on to Danica and then Sarah, if you have any comments. Hi. So it's pretty simple. You just have to give us a call or give us an email. We will talk to you about the project, what you want to do. We'll give you a project proposal and give you a quote, and then we can figure things out from there. Right. You're good. <laughs> yeah. So it's quite simple, and uh, we're here for you. And of course, take a f- take advantage of that uh, free consultation that we're giving out to- as part of this webinar. Another question regarding emergence results. How do emergence results in the greenhouse differ from germination results in the lab? This actually has come up uh, a couple times in, in our uh, Q&A box. Can, can one of you comment on that? Yeah, I think all of us could potentially do that. Um, I'll just start. So uh, like Danica said, we have... Um, physical uh, plants in the lab that we can grow out in different sorts of media, uh, do different seeding depths, um, and grow those plants out to a different and more advanced growth stage than what we can do in the lab. Um, And then our germination tests. uh, So like Sarah said, it's quite similar um, temperature in our germination or our germinator and the greenhouse right now. But our germination test is accredited by the Canadian Food Inspection Agency. So um, that's actually planted on blotter paper uh, for crop types. And um, it's done the same in every single lab. So we have to abide by rules and methods and procedures um, that are standardized across Canada. And there's no environmental bias in a germination test. So that is very different from what you might see in emergence in the greenhouse. Um, do you guys have anything else to add with just with those differences, maybe in what um, can be done in emergence trials versus uh, germination tests? Yeah, so I was just going to mention, just as I touched on with the seeding depth, we can do it to like whatever seeding depth, maybe you want to test it at a, like a right. deeper mm-hmm. or maybe more shallow. Maybe you want to test it on drier soil. We can, you know, water it less. We can water it more. We can right. do anything like that. Like there's a lot more variables that we can do in the greenhouse. Um, are we are we actually answering that question for your listener? Um, something I've noticed, and this is only through you know doing my own vegetables. <laughs> um, I'd say that the emergence, when you talk about emergence, emergence is slower in the greenhouse, uh, whereas in the germinator, it's quicker. We have to force things in in a germinator. Uh, because we only have seven to 10 days to get the results, um, the final results. Right. 
Okay, I'm just going to ch ch check uh, briefly our Q&A box here. One moment, please. I do have a question regarding uh, technology. And Sarah, you might uh, be best to answer this. Uh, what was your decision factor in, in deciding that uh, a greenhouse was right for 2020 Seed Labs uh, versus, say, like a, a warehouse setup with LED lighting, for example? What, what made you want to go with a greenhouse specifically? Good question. <laughs> um, I, I actually, when, uh, when Rachel told me that I was going to be um, on this webinar, I started uh, reading up um, on other greenhouse systems. And I was very um, happy to see that we had gone this route um, as opposed to, say, a polytunnel, um, you know, that's sort of set up somewhat like a quonset. Um, this does have all the um, systems in place for us to utilize temperature, humidity, light uh, to a finite um, degree, if you like. And I don't necessarily know um, how efficient, I don't think our climate um, would allow us to go with a polytunnel or a concert type setup. Um, in fact, through reading, um, I've so just as an FYI or a, 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 an interesting fact, um, of course, we were concerned at the you know operating costs of this greenhouse over the winter, and um, we're around about a thousand dollars a month to heat it. So we're being very, very careful um, about how we utilize the heat and the light and the curtain. Um, but there are other systems that we can utilize to make this more energy efficient. And that's something that 2020 Seed Labs right now is really um, keen to, to look at. So as you can probably appreciate, and I'm just going off on a little <laughs> tangent, but everybody's talking about carbon and um, being carbon neutral and having a, a carbon neutral footprint. And when you think of uh, what we can do for you know, composting, um, there's a worm castings um, factory, I think it would probably be called, um, just down the road from here. And we've just done some studies with them. And uh, for example, uh, we're working with them right now to see if they can use our seedlings that we throw out from all our germination tests so that the worms can eat that and obviously turn it into composted um, worm castings. Um, they're a really interesting organization. We just do not want to waste anything. Uh, we're looking at solar uh, energy and um, our samples, for example, that we work on um, that are archived for a year um, are typically either, I hate to say it, thrown away um, or sometimes um, someone you know uses them for for something for livestock for you know feeding the wild animals and so on and we're looking at opportunities there so i'm glad that we went with this greenhouse um because it is part of our energy you know our awareness around energy right yeah well and energy issues are are top of mind for for everyone these days so no thank you so much guys that was fascinating stuff thanks for giving us a tour today great thank, thank you, you so you. much mark yeah and i was just going to um let our audience know that uh, again this webinar is uh, has been recorded and will be available on germination.ca within the next 48 hours and again, I'd just like to thank our, our sponsor today, 2020 Sea Labs, for their support. And thank you so much to our audience for spending your lunch hour with us. If you have questions about this webinar or you want to host your, your own webinar, contact us at marketing at seedworldgroup.com. So this is Mark Zinkowitz of Germination signing off. And Sarah, Danica, and Rachel and our audience, have a great day, everybody. Bye. 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 Thank you. Take care.